Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us here at Unity of Bremerton. I just got a sign on my computer that says our connection is unstable. So let's start right out with what that principle is. The second principle of unity is human beings are divine at their core. Therefore, they are inherently good. Does that mean that you always do good things? Does it mean that you're perfect? No, not at all. It means that at your core, you're perfect. Okay. Oh, oops. Am I on now? I've yes, lost no. it. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> That's okay. It was the voice from it's above. Good. Now, anyway, um, of course, we've all heard that we are a part of God. Michael's last song was a really good example of that. It couldn't have been better for this morning's talk. And surprisingly enough, we did not collaborate. He picked what he was going to do, and I didn't know till he sang it. But of course, we're all on the same track. We decided a couple of weeks ago with Cindy's help that going through the five unity principles might be a really good thing to do at this point. Michael's talk two weeks ago was on the first unity principle. Of course, it was interrupted, but everyone I'm sure is aware of what that principle is. And I hope that you're putting it into action in your own life. With today's lesson, I want to talk about what it means to be divine at your core. If you think about it, that means that as human beings and as part of God, we're capable of anything. The world is wide open to us. The only thing that we have to do, and as they say, simple to say, but difficult to do, we have to tap in to that inner light, to follow that light, not to become distracted by today's worries. If you've got a problem and you're like everybody else, me, myself included, you talk about that problem. You tell people about it. You worry about it. Yes, you pray about it, but mostly you think about it. And all that does is expand it. It makes it greater than it is. Emmett Fox says that if we concentrate on God and nothing else, simply on God, the nature of God, the way things are because of God, all the qualities of God, and when the problem comes up, simply ignore it and go back to concentrating on God. Every time you trip over that problem, Turn yourself back within, center yourself, and concentrate on the one power of the universe, the power that has the ability to make anything in your life an absolute miracle. Now you think, why wouldn't we tap into that? Why wouldn't we just automatically say, God, here it is. I know you'll take care of it. It's that big word, faith. And it's not an, always an easy thing to have, to hold, to keep in mind. Especially times like now, when we're all feeling a little bit isolated and a little bit away from those people that we love. And maybe not out there giving the hugs we usually give we still give them in our mind and we reach out knowing that God is at the center of each of us. So we're never truly separated. It's often been said that it's like a, wa a drop of water in the ocean. That's what we are, each and every one of us. And join together, look at the power of the ocean. The ocean doesn't have problems. On occasion, the ocean creates problems, or at least we think that's what happens. 
but it actually just brings about lessons that we need. When you're a part of something that big, it's very difficult to get the concept to realize that you're just a part of, and that doesn't mean you're insignificant. Every part of the whole is as treasured and as important as any other. You are special. You're as special as everyone around you. And the difference in the specialness, if you want to call it that, is how we show it. Do we show our core? Do we use the divinity that we know is a part of us on an everyday basis? Try for just a few minutes every day to center yourself on that. What can I do to show that I'm a part of the one? Does not mean that you're not whole and complete as you are. It means that when you concentrate on the universal truth, you become much stronger, much more powerful. And surprisingly enough, in an odd kind of way, you almost begin to glow. This seems so easy when you talk about it. Okay, next time something goes wrong, I'll think about God. Maybe I'll even turn it over to God. Well, there's a concept. One I'm not always very good about following myself, but hey, I can sit here and tell you guys, just turn it over. It's always going to work. And it does. But remembering that is not at all the easy part. Michael and I went through some really difficult times a few months back. And I was pretty shaken up by it and found myself being really negative, much more so than I ever am, and pretty verbal about that negativity. And I picked up a book and started reading because something in me told me I needed to get back to the basics. I needed to reevaluate everything in my life and maybe start with that attitude of gratitude we talk about. Maybe start listing the things that I could be grateful for. And by the time I was done, I realized that we were never gonna get out of the mess we were in if we didn't do what we both knew was the right thing. Turn it over, let it go, leave it alone, take your hands off of it, and give it to God where it belongs. We began to relax. We began to have more fun. Every time we spent a dollar, we didn't say, oh my gosh, where's the next one coming from? And this is something that I try to include in all my talks. We began to tithe again. Instead of saying, well, we can't afford it. No, we couldn't afford not to. Giving of ourselves, and our monetary values can make all the difference. You don't always have to write a check. If you can write a check about yourself, if you can put yourself into a project, into something that you know is for the good, that's spiritual, that helps build others up, every time you do that, you're closer. You're joining with the one presence and one power. It's pretty amazing what can happen. And I was just reading a little pamphlet that comes out from Unity Village, and it's called The Golden Key for Today. It's Emmett Fox originally wrote it, and actually that's the page I had highlighted um, because I wanted to share this with you. In it, he says, God is omnipotent and we are God's image and likeness, and have dominion over all things. Can't be somebody else's fault you're a part of. You can't play the blame game. This is the inspired teachings 
and it is intended to be taken literally and at its face value. The inability to, the ability, I'm sorry, to draw on this power is not the special prerogative of the of mystic or the saint or the enlightened one. It is the prerogative of all of us. Everyone has this ability, whoever you are, wherever you are, the golden key to harmony is in your hand now, not later, not a week from now, but now. This is because in scientific prayer, it is God who does the work and not you. That just really helped me center myself and remember how true those words are. And I'd like you just for a minute to think of a problem. Don't concentrate on it, but just bring it to mind. And then close your eyes and take that problem within and see yourself turning it over, handing it off to the only true power in the universe and wash your hands and dry them off and say thank you and thank you again and then leave with God in the center of your being and not the problem and use that visualization whenever that problem comes to mind again. Give it to God. My biggest problem always has been my biggest stumbling block is I'm a control freak. Yes, Michael, I've admitted it. I am a control freak. And it does tend to interfere a lot with God's plan for me. I think I know better. And every time I think I know what's best, I'm headed for trouble. Get your little self, the ego self, out of the way and let that second unity principle work for you. Make God divine at your center and stay centered whenever possible. Go within and feel that feeling. And maybe you can even begin to gradually bring that feeling out with you and let it spread all over you and spread to the rest of the people around you. Share that divinity and always try to remember that at your core, you are divine. You are a part of the one presence and the one power. The only power that's truly active in the universe. Even when our ego tells us differently. And the ego is probably a talk for another day, but it's a doozy. And of course, I wouldn't have an ego. Mm -mm. I'm not a control freak and I don't have an ego. Well, I can see my husband in the living room laughing at this point. But we're all that way. We all think I've learned enough at times. We think I can put that into practice and you can, you can take that second principle and you can put it into practice, but don't lose sight of where it came from. Don't lose sight of the divine and don't begin to take credit for all of it yourself. Always remember to give back to the universe for all the gifts you're being given. You have that power within you, each of us, and join together as we do in prayer and meditation makes a big difference in everyone's life. And if any of you need to have somebody else help you remember that divinity, to help you through a problem, remember, we have prayer ministers. And they're there even now. They didn't go away just because we have Zoom. 
We have a telephone, we have Zoom, and we have that connection of the heart. We are all one. There is no separation between us. So the next time you look at somebody that you're maybe not particularly fond of, and you think one of those thoughts, and I won't bring them up because we know nobody else has those, remember that person at their core is divine too. And maybe you can help bring that out in them. And if you can't, you can gently and kindly step away from them and not take the experience with you. Bless them and let them go on their way. And I've sent a whole lot of people on their way, believe me. I'm not as good yet at letting the divine show, but I practice it every day. I try to remember that at my core, I am divine. Some days at my core, I think I'm a real witch, but be that as it may, most days I don't feel that way. Try to remember how kind and loving you truly are. And remember, that all comes from the divine. Thank you.